Until Morning is Night is the band's second Christmas album. Were you surprised by that, that it came, you know, to be? You know, there's a, because well, we're beginning to do work now on our 10th album. Uh, is it our 10th album? It's not, our, our 9th album. <laughs> I've lost count. may count as yes, somehow. Yes, but, but yeah, it does. Tremus in your count? Tremus for definitely counts, but it's a different group. So, but it's not yes. by far. Explore record, but it's just what I wanted to say is that uh, uh, things change. It's interesting to see how closely you hew to what you have an idea for your next album and, and where does it wind up from where your original thought was I think I'm going to do this and then do you kind of stay in that world or do you discover something else as you go through it and so um, when we made the first Christmas album in uh, 2014 uh, we were due for an album we'd made of love and loss and we were mostly promoting that and playing it out and it was time to make a record and so we made two we made Angels and uh, BP Xmas at the same time and released them two weeks apart at Christmas and one at New Year's. And uh, that was very clearly going to be a Christmas album very much uh, in, the, in the, uh, the vein of Lowe's Christmas album, which is just called Christmas. Uh, we are hugely respectful and hugely uh, admire and hugely influenced by, by Alan and me and that band. You know, we just love Lowe hugely. And uh, so we do a lot of things like Lo do, and we open to the Xmas with an original, uh, and then and then it covers uh, some other songs. Songs, but that was very very clear to me at that album that that was going to be a Christmas album. Uh, I am not entirely convinced at this point, having made Till Morning Is Not, that it's a Christmas album. I mean, obviously it's a Christmas album. It's a Christmas story. It's all these beautiful. Uh, uh, obscure Christmas songs. I think there's fireworks going off here. The rooftop of the Hell's Kitchen studio. Uh, uh, clearly, it's a, clearly it's a Christmas album to anyone you know, outside. But but to me, uh, so much changed during the making of it. And the the whole again, I've talked about this not at all until t today and yesterday. Now several times is that it was inspired by. Uh, nine Lessons and Carols, which has just been a really something the material has been really really close to me for you know over ten years, and I really wondered if, if I could do something inspired by that. And uh, once I started doing it, I thought it would hew very closely to that, and it kind of doesn't. It takes a flow. Even the flow is different than Nine Lessons and Carols, which is why I continue to say that's inspired by it. But there's such a thing. Uh, part of it is our life experience and a bunch of things that have happened to us, you know, and the love and loss and the deaths and the injuries and everything that man has been beset with. Um, it's just a struggle, you know, we're all doing the best we can and um, everyone. And that's really what this record is. I, th I think it has special resonance at Christmas time, obviously, because it is, there's Christmas material, but because of the French spoken word, which was something that we came up on kind of late, just, I mean, it was right there for the recording, but, you know, in thinking about the album, that wasn't something that happened until we really began doing it. And uh, the, although I knew I wanted to do an experimental piece, Angel Frequency is so different than I would have imagined this album being, had I made it five years ago. Um, in the same way, I have no idea what the next album is going to be, although we've already you know, recorded a bunch of stuff. Uh, I couldn't tell you now what that's going to be, and if I did, it would probably be, I'd be really abused <laughs> in a year and a half to talk about album nine, uh, still untitled, uh, because I'm sure it'll be really different than what I think it's going to be right now. And I really think that happened with Till Morning, which is another thing, because the album is called Till Morning is Nigh, A Dream of Christmas. And we generally alight it, although everybody does this with their records, you know, when you call them by you know, half of their name. But I really think it's it's not it's not just for breakfast anymore. It's not just a Christmas album. I think there's so much 
resonant things going on with it for myself, just you know personally. Uh, that uh, I really, it's it's such a different album than I than I think I would have made a couple of years ago, even being for being so specifically inspired by something very concrete uh, and very knowable. Uh, it's really became something else and I don't think that could have happened without the, you know, everything that happened in our lives in the intervening months and years and uh, it's very uh, it's kind of different than anything we've done honestly even for some of the things that it has commonalities with it, continuing uh, uh, use of spoken word it's in French, uh, the, the different instrument, instrumentation, uh, using melodica and organ and synthesizer, more found sound. Uh, uh, did I come anywhere close to answering the question that you asked? I don't remember the question, <laughs> and I've asked it. It got dark while we were here. Yeah, thank you.